to um, app verification. So um, this is something that recently came out um, from Google. Um, so th there's basically, uh, uh, as a result of um, a couple of high profile uh, phishing uh, exploits that are using Google Apps Scripts, um, Google have tightened up um, basically how, how things work. So you'll, uh, and quite a few people have um, posted um, scratch heading mo moments in the Google Plus community. So previously when you were using, uh, you know, you, you deployed a web app or an add-on, um, or, you, you know, you had something container bound within something like a Google Sheet. Um, if you use scope, so if you were calling services, um, then that would prompt basically the, the authentication flow so that the user would have to um, select their uh, their Google account and, and give permission for that. Um, what Google have done is actually tighten this up. So um, now they've, they've got a whole verification layer in that. So if your application is using certain scopes and um, it, it uh, um, needs verification from the user, uh, unless you've had your app verified, you're going to get this kind of um, uh, HTTPS certificate failure type dialogue, uh, where the only way to proceed is uh, quite scary. You have to click on advance, and you have to click on the unsafe option. You have to type something in. Um, so this has created quite a few headaches for, for people in the community. So uh, there's documentation on that. But we thought we'd just um, delve a bit deeper into what, it, what you know, how you can prevent getting the app verification dialogue um, coming up. So either through verification process or just looking at how your script is coded uh, and some of the other implications. So there's more documentation. So um, it's probably worth just spending a time, uh, a moment, just to mention uh, where we are with add-ons. So, um, so uh, with add-ons, there was already a publication process uh, in place. Um, so verification has been integrated into that. And Steve, I think you mentioned earlier that you, you had a, an app go through uh, add-on verification and it, it was OK for you? Your, your experience was OK? Yeah. Um, just this week, I had a client that was very complex add-on. And I thought, OK, I, I prepared my client to say, we'll have a to-do list of items to, to fix, and then we'll just go finally get it approved. But to my surprise, it was um, accepted, approved without any to-do items. So I guess we, you know, just follow the best practices uh, that it's really on the online documentation that Google add-ons have. And make sure you have your privacy policy set. And if you check off all those items, you can expect uh, maybe a, a nice uh, experience with the, with the uh, process of getting it approved. Um, you do have something listed on your slide that um, I did follow up with Google on, and they added that portion, that last paragraph you have, that says add-ons that are published to a limited set of users or domains. I just wanted to uh, clarify that a little bit more, if I could. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, okay, so sure. If, you, if you imagine if you go into your script editor, you click Publish, and you have choices. And you, in this case, if you click uh, Web App as an add-on, or you publish as an add-on, when you finally get to kind of like the Chrome Web Store area, uh, near the end, uh, you have an option to say public uh, within, I think, my domain, uh, uh, unlisted, maybe to a group. Well, if you click public, the existing process that I just described moments ago kicks in, right? Uh, however, um, if you do click something that's not public, then you may experience this verification thing. So they basically are recommending if you're uh, having an add-on um, that's not public, you may have an issue, maybe within your domain, hopefully not, but if it's unlisted uh, link, then you may have this verification issue, in which case you should go through the verified app process by filling out the form. So that's what I wanted to clarify on that. 
that's um, a very very useful point, um, Steve. So uh, I think you know, given that it doesn't, as you say, it doesn't trigger the automatic. If it's public, it triggers the automatic. Yeah, because public and, verification. Yeah, because public already has a process from day one, yeah. from two years ago. Two years ago, when add-ons became a living thing, right? So, so that that's so. And we'll talk in a second about the verification process outside of add-ons. So there there is a, a separate form for you to fill in, uh, and there's a couple of requirements uh, for that as well. Um, so just moving on. So that was verification for add-ons. Now for web apps and other other deployments. So. Um, this is, you know, if you publish a web app, or if um, you have a container-bound script, so something attached to a document, uh, a spreadsheet, or a form, or whatever. Uh, so the script is part of that document, and you, you know, one with kind of the original way of distributing those. Um, uh, before we had add-ons, was just to give anyone view access, and they would make a copy of it. Um, so. This is kind of the matrix of what what's going to trigger uh, uh, an authentication flow. Um, I should uh, my understanding of this is uh, you'll only get the unverified authentication flow if you're hitting certain scopes. Wrong on that. So uh, I'm getting a nod from Steve. So um, if if your script isn't using certain scopes, um, then you, you just get the normal authentication flow. Um, so, what this is showing is if you, if you published uh, a web app um, or other deployment using a Gmail account and it's using a sensitive scope, you are going to get the un unverified auth flow. So, um, it, there, there's there's no way around that. So, um, and the first column or or the second column. Uh, you know, is if if you go through the uh, the verification process, so uh, you you just get the the normal. You still have to get people to to click, you know, their account and to accept the scopes, but they don't get that scary. Uh, this is an unsafe or unverified app. Um, within uh, G Suite, uh, there's uh, uh, a couple of things. So um, if you're publishing something in your G G Suite domain and it's used by another G Suite user in your domain, they're not going to get the unverified authentication. It's only when you go outside of your G Suite domain that you're, you're going to have to start looking at if you want to um, get your app verified. So I don't know if there's anything either you want to add to that or correct me if I've got anything of that wrong. Um, well, the only thing that comes to mind, and I don't know the answer, is if you have a client that has subdomains, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how this table is affected. Um, uh, so, for example, if I have a primary domain and uh, the normal, af normal authorization flow occurs, but what if now I'm branching out to the row number two that's um, account not of customer A? In other words, it's a subdomain. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe uh, it's fine. Maybe subdomains are fine. I, I don't know yet. Yeah, well, I'll maybe see if we can get a comment on that one. Um, it's not something I know. Uh, Wakar, I don't know if it's something you. No. Um. Uh, no actually, uh, I have not followed much this uh, this issue, so right. I'm not much aware about it. So, um, if I just quick, so if I jump back, so there there is when we should sort of just talk off. There was this kind of you you could still use and. Uh, an un unverified app, but you have to click on the advanced and then do the unsafe thing. Um, so users can do that, but there is a cap of, on the number of users that can uh, basically click on, you know, do that process. I haven't seen any numbers on what the cap is. Um, I don't know, Steve, you've, you've seen anything on this? Well, it just reminds me that before the uh, authorization flow was implemented shortly ago, before that, the cap was more noticeable, yeah. uh, but since they started this process, it's kind of supposed to be replacing it. Um, so hopefully, that's more of a minor thing. What we're talking about now with the uh, cap, yeah. but we'll see. I, and yes, so in the web app, uh, we'll come on to this in a second. Um, 
there was a, a whole, if you published the web app, there was only, I think it was 50 users a day. Um, but um, whether it's the same number, it's a, a slightly different cap we're talking about here. Um, so again, that might, gray area, perhaps we'll get some comment on that, uh, we'll clarify. Um, so shortly after um, Google did the kind of uh, push notifying users about this, um, Wesley Chun, who's a developer relations at Google, uh, posted on the, the Google Plus community. So um, just clarifying a couple of things. So uh, the first thing um, he mentioned was that the un uh, unverified app flow um, only kicks in for sensitive scopes. So Google haven't published a list of sensitive scopes. Um, and I'm guessing they're, that they haven't published it because it's it's not a fixed list that it'll probably change over time. Um, but doing a quick test within the script editor, um, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago now, so this might be out of date. But these were the scopes I found that were causing um, the unverified app flow. So if you include these scopes within your script project, then uh, and if you're publishing it as a web app, distributing it as a container bound um, or doing uh, an unlisted add-on, these were the scopes that were, were triggering your on unverified applications. There was, um, I've included a couple of surprise ones. So um, spreadsheets, slides and docs, um, I could kind of see, you know, because um, these scopes are quite broad, they allow, um, um, writing and uh, reading of data that they're not uh, usually restricted. Um, Formap was fine. Uh, similarly, Gmail, whilst is a um, a scope that needs you to go through a verification process, uh, Mail app wasn't. Um, so there's some interesting variations in there. I don't know, Steve, you've got any comment on that? Yeah, I'm glad you went through that exercise. It's, it helps us to figure out what is sensitive. Um, yeah. Now, one thing with Mail App, I believe that's more of a like a read-only type of uh, uh, yeah. service where Gmail App allows you to do updates. Instead. Yeah. So I can see the differences there. One other thing. So this was this came off the back of um, a post I think you were contributing, Steve, on uh, in the. Uh, um, the G Suite add-on developer community was um, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can restrict the scopes within your projects by using the only current document uh, annotation. So um, what this does is means that if you're using any of these listed scopes, which are um, currently sensitive, um, by using only current doc, you, you negate that. So because it's limited to a, a single document, um, a, a, you don't you don't get into the unverified app flow. Um, so this was actually a godsend for me because one of my most popular projects is a, a Google Sheet with a, a container bound script, so it's not an add on. Uh, so by using only current doc in that script, um, people can use that as as previously without the uh, unverified app flow. And that's probably something else just to mention that when you're distributing something as a container bound script, um, you can't actually get that verified because it's a container bound script. And when someone makes a copy of it, basically they would have to get their copy verified themselves. Um, so you can't get a template verified. Um, so that's, that's something just to be aware of. But I suppose less people are doing Container bound stuff. Are you, Steve, are you still doing container bound distribution? Well, it's interesting. Uh, this particular add on for this client that was approved, uh, he has a report segment, and the report is basically using a spreadsheet. So I said, well, we could simply create a, a spreadsheet, make it like a template, and we'll copy the template that contains yeah. the contained app script that has a custom menu of like two items. So it was very simple and basic. I thought, okay, great. But as you pointed out, as soon as you make a copy of a spreadsheet in this case that contains an app script, it's considered new. Yeah. And you have the verification issue. So uh, that probably means 
in this use case, we need to use an add-on for yeah. something that's very, very simple. But that yes. it gets around it. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm, I'm <laughs> in a way. I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one that's distributing container-bound script. But I am moving mm. to an add-on. Don't worry, folks. I, I will eventually get around to the add-on. Um, so just back to the post from uh, Wesley Tune. So existing apps are not affected. Um, so if I can't remember, I think this was um, 21st of July. Uh, yeah, it was or, or, uh, 19th of July or something. It was around early, early mid July that this came out. So yeah, have you yeah, I think it was the 18th. And it's not affected yet is a key word. Um, <laughs> so it, it may be a, a big experience to start going through all the existing yeah. ones. But as of now, they're for anything new. So. Yeah. Um, so uh, the other thing was the per day um, authorization throttling was a temporary measure, and it's been rolled back in favor of an unverified app cap. So what I think this means or is referring to is this was something else that um, Steve you contributed on was the <laughs> ten web apps uh, new authorization limits. So this was something that appeared in the documentation, and now I, I can't find it anymore. So I'm, I'm guessing this is what um, uh, Wesley was referring to, that uh, publishing as a web app um, is, is not restricted now to, to the quotas that were there for, for a uh, Exactly. For yeah, yeah, that's what I was referring to about this new verification process, like July 18th, whatever. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of replacing this. Um, but there, there's that mention of a cap for even with with the unverified app uh, cap, um, but there's doesn't seem to be any documentation on that. So uh, we'll try and get clarification. Um, I think the last thing you have public facing app scripts uh, go through the verification verification process to to remove the unverified web app warning. So quickly, what does that look like? Um, so uh, there are a couple of requirements for verification. So, um, and uh, th this is for uh, a standalone web app uh, or our script project. So this is, uh, as mentioned earlier, add-ons. It's it's integrated into public add-on process. So I'm, I'm guessing, Steve, some of this looks familiar for you in terms of the submission you did. So. Um, for a requirement for verification is uh, the first thing is that you have a, a domain that is verified ownership of Google. So um, this is a, a website domain. Um, was that something that I suppose was that already within the add-ons verification process that you needed that? Um, not really. Um... The original verification process with add-ons wasn't particularly interested in having a domain to be verified. But now, I believe that is the case. Mm -hmm. So with this client that I referred to, we did have a G Suite business account, you know, the one that you pay $10 a month per user for, that level. Mm -hmm. And we, so that was good, check off. And then we did spend a lot of time to create a nice privacy policy. So those are the things that I think is why we had a successful approval. Uh, so yeah, the, the second to so, uh, a website. So if you're a G Suite customer, I'd imagine you, you, you're going to have a domain owned anywhere. Uh, um, but it, it, there needs to be a, a public facing website where on your verified domain, you can put your privacy policy. Um, so those are the, the two things that you need. There's various other bits and pieces that you need um, to provide, so information on the, the scopes that you're using and why you're using them. Um, but there's more documentation on that on, on the website. So um, more bits and pieces for you to have to do as a Google Apps Script developer if you want to uh, publish web apps, um, add-ons, um, or, or other uh, script projects um, that, that are using these sensitive um, scopes. Um, but um, Steve, anything else yeah. you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, generally, um, 
there's a group of app scripters, if you want to call it, call it that, where some of us are kind of like, you know, the hackers where, hey, I just have a Gmail account. And I just want to create these things. And it's, um, maybe it's for a few people. And, but it's almost like we really should take the next professional step to say, you know what, I better create a domain. I better professionalize this a little bit more uh, because for the sake of uh, the end user's safety with phishing attacks. So that's a transition that in the app script community that I think we, we really need to accept and hold, you know, embrace to say we really need to be, become more professional by having a uh, professional domain that can be verified. Um, I've, I know Jonathan's back. Is, is there anything you want to ask or add to the? I think to... I've been, yeah, I've been following this a little bit because I've uh, a, a latent fear that I'm going to be <laughs> deluged with. Um, <laughs> all of my prototype projects that I've got running for both my company and a bunch of others are suddenly not working and, and the, sort of the headaches of late night calls of why isn't it working. Um, most of the add-ons that I produce end up being uh, registered directly only to a G Suite domain. I don't do really anything public facing but, um, but bespoke tools for uh, private enterprise. So I'm hoping that I'm less likely to be touched with it, but I haven't really worked out from the documentation whether that is the case. Um, so that's that's my hope, but the fear is that I've not, um, I mean, one way around it is to have a sort of a common OAuth project in the developer portal and kind of have that authorized, and then have a whole load of uh, app scripts that only refer to that single OAuth um, uh, console project that would be a one way of managing the fact that I've got lots and lots and lots of these uh, little things running uh, and to try and uh, bring those into an alignment probably. So Jonathan you're saying you're not impacted yet but you're wondering if you will be. I, I'm Yes I've, I've certainly been following it with interest I haven't had any notification everything that I've worked on still works and um, I don't know whether you know when that will happen if it will happen and that's what's been Unclear, I think. Uh, does your company use subdomains by any chance? No, we don't. Okay, I was just curious. We think you'd be safe if you're mostly working in a domain environment, so you're you're publishing mm -hmm. stuff just for a G Suite set of domain users. Um, so far, that that the, you you seem to be taking the requirements and not needing to go through the verification process. It's only if something that's older and it was. Done yeah. doing something with some scope that somehow isn't yeah. linked to it, because there are some scopes that are definitely linked to uh, G Suite Enterprise, you know, SLA uh, service level agreements, and they're definitely bound in. And there are some things that sometimes mm -hmm. you borrow on and bring in, and I, I can't remember. You know, I haven't kept track, de detailed track of everything, and it's the older ones that I'm kind of worried about. But we'll, we'll see. The the other question I had, which I haven't got uh, a good answer yet. Is what happens with libraries? So, mm. if you if you get a library verified, does the if the the script project that uses that library does that inherit the verification? Um, and what happens if that library changes? And uh, you know, it might not be your library. You could be using a third party library. Um, I I haven't. I've asked this question and I haven't got a response. Uh, I don't know. If anyone else here has asked a similar question, it's yeah. a good so, question. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know because the library yeah. itself isn't isn't actually were running ever. So you know that that library code could contain all sorts of yeah. Uh, the, the 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 response I got was um, I was told to consider the script project to basically. Consider it as inheriting all the code from the library into the script project. So, mm. um, if even if the library was verified, um, I would still need to get the script project verified. Um, but uh, I mean, line one of page one of the add-on says, "Don't use libraries." So yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe this was coming <laughs> over the hill some for some time. <laughs> so we're all kind of. Um, Rolling with the punches here and just seeing where it goes. I, I, I agree with Steve. I think, in terms of creating 
uh, an environment that you know people are confident in using I, I think it, it, it's perhaps needed um, there's some of the details that you know the for example the unverified app screen for me it looks too much like a SSL certificate error free page that you get with you in your browser and I don't know if that level of fear is needed perhaps it is um, given that you know phishing attacks can be quite destructive perhaps we need, need that level of fear similar to a bad um, SSL cer certificate mm. and um, well that's that's what we had on app verification it's as I mentioned that um, whilst a lot of the dust has settled I think there's still more things to be worked out um, and we look forward to the contributions from the community the things that they discover um, questions they have uh, on this particular topic and with that I don't think we've got anything more unless any um, we have any final questions uh, or thoughts yeah I do have one thing I just want to follow up on that we mentioned in a previous broadcast and I guess I should share my screen do that right now um, there's also a effort to say if I'm an admin and let's say I use the G Suite marketplace and I bring over or install a solution and application on behalf of all my users in the domain, um, there's another level of authorization that's possible now in the control panel to say, well, I may only want to authorize um, spreadsheets, uh, not necessarily drive. And if someone turns that on at the, the administrator to kind of restrict it, um, it's possible that you may have an add-on that was installed by that administrator and the end user is getting an error. And, and then that could get back to the, the developer of the add-on. And so this is a post that was um, out there. And supposedly what the error message should say is to say contact your administrator. Uh, don't contact the developer of the add-on. So I just wanted to highlight that if you have an add-on and you're getting some sort of permission that errors that you may be trapping yourself, uh, you should be no action on your part. There should have been a message for the end user to contact their administrator that they need to turn on that Google Drive or whatever. Um, so that's how it's supposed to flow. So just to recap that, um, if uh, so, uh, an admin's done a domain-wide deploy of an add-on, but they haven't switched uh, one of the permissions on, um, it, it, it's throwing an error message. Yeah, or let's say the other use case, that before this new opportunity of tightening down authorizations by service, that uh, maybe a thousand people within the domain have been using your add-on, then all of a sudden, the next yeah. day, uh, they're getting an error, and it's because the admin says, oh, there's a new tightening down service by service levels, right? And if they un and they said, well, no one should have access to drive, all of a sudden, <laughs> they get an error. So that, that could be another use case. Uh, Jonathan, I know you do a lot of uh, domain-wide deploy. I suppose that's less of an issue because you're talking to the administrators correctly. usually but people change and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it and, and um, depends on who gets these notifications so if, uh, basically as Steve was saying if someone gets a notification oh, I can now have all exercise all this control and fine-tune and I'll be the, the rock star super security guy and then suddenly they break a whole bunch of spaghetti code way <laughs> way back in there. Um, yeah there's, there's always that risk and these things these things do happen so um, I think um, we're actually going to finish um, on time for once. Yay. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd just like to uh, thank Waikara for um, his contributions to today's show. So um, as mentioned, we'll, we'll um, provide links to his slides. And we'll, we'll have an edited version as well um, of, of the video. So you can watch that back at your pleasure. Um, Thank you to um, Steve as well for his support in today's episode and Jonathan um, for your contributions.